The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this is a very special show for the end of the year of whoever's Lord 2014. This is our big year in review show. Uh, I've given us two hours. We may, we may take it all, we may not take it all. Who knows? It'll go as long as it needs to, and we are doing this live on Hitbox.tv. Uh, to everybody who is in the chat right now, hello, hello, hello. And hello, hello, hello. And if you're watching this or listening to this later, then uh, you're missing out. You, you really are. Because um, we've, got, we've got some guests here. Uh, my co-host, my main co-host, they're not here yet. Uh, they may or may not pop in. Who knows? They haven't gotten back to me, but we'll find out. If they pop in, hooray! If they don't, then hey, you know what? Extra week off for them. Because uh, next week, we're not going to have a show because it's going to it's gonna be a little too close to Christmas. I know it's like three days out or what have you. But, uh, but you know, people could still be traveling or could be just covering from Christmas or whatever. Because it falls on a Thursday this year. It makes it really awkward for scheduling. Uh, awkward. Yeah, very, very awkward. All the drinking. Yes, all the <laughs> drinking. And you know what? My, my big Christmas gift from everybody around here, I am going to be alone for a while. That's what I want. No kids. Just me here doing my thing. I'm probably going to film a review that I've been needing to film because, you know, mm. I, I've been slow ass on it. Now, now if you miss... Now, and then you will be and, and then you will be visited by three ghosts, Gomer. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you're working yourself too hard. That's the thing. I don't feel like I work myself hard enough. That's a weird thing. But... Mm. but okay, uh, Lewis. <laughs> Gomer's <laughs> <laughs> uh. alternate you versus the car all along. There we go. Hey, no one. Hey, you know what? We well, like the same kind of hats, so you know. Yeah. Well, there is one guy on this planet who really overworks himself. It's that guy in Minnesota that yeah. isn't Gomer. Yeah, that would yeah. be Mr. Lovehog. Who's how? How far yeah. is the? How far up is the? Uh, 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 Kickstarter. The Indiegogo. It's uh, ninety-two. It's ninety. It's ninety two fifty right now. We're trying to get it to ninety five hundred before his stream tomorrow. Nice. Um, and if we make forty grand, um, we're gonna build a spaceship. So donate, y'all. Yes, go donate if you can. Go if you can. Do it. As soon as I can, I'm probably gonna throw money at it myself. So am I. I'm, I'm actually. I'm actually gonna donate the dilithium crystal they will need for warp travel. There you go. Okay, you want to know something really funny? Okay, speaking of how awesome Lewis is as a human being. Um, yes. So, as soon as I found out that I lost my job, I was talking to him last night, and I was like, and now I'm really sad because I had been waiting for this week's check to go get Pokemon. And he was like, well, I'm getting you a Christmas present. And I'm like, no, you don't have to do that. He's like, too late, I'm sending it. Where am I sending it to? <laughs> and I go, <laughs> I go, okay. <laughs> and he goes, do you want Sapphire? Like, that's the one you want, right? Where am I sending it? <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yep. Oh, yay. So when you it's get it... It's a Christmas circle. I got him a shiny... I got him a shiny ho-ho, by the way. Like that. Well, yeah. Damn. I know. He was like... He, he was just like, you've just had such a terrible year. Like, you need something good in your life. And nothing is better than Pokemans. Yes. 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 When you get, I, I am get, inclined. Get all, all, I, all beefed up, and powered up, and everything. You're gonna have to challenge me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm playing Pokemon. I'm playing a Pokemon Mega Ruby right now. You announced for podcasting. Yes. No. Hey. Nothing oh. wrong with that. I've I've got both. I've got the download. I downloaded Sapphire and I got the physical copy for uh, Ruby. So. Uh, mm. It's a lot of fun. And I and I. You, you know, know what's really funny about that actually. Like, everywhere around here is sold out of Alpha Sapphire. Like, really? every single place. Like, even Amazon.com was sold out of Sapphire. He had to go to GameStop. Wow. I think maybe the reason for that is because, like, how IGN held... Or one of the reviews, they said, like, too... It, this, the Alpha Sapphire, too much water. And I'm like, yes. this is very, very water. bad. They, <laughs> that made no sense. It's like, why? I mean, come on. It, it's, it's based in the Hoenn region. At this point, there's no excuse for knowing, 
you know, if, if you are a Pokemon player that's been around for a while, there's no excuse in knowing in not knowing that Hoenn is full of water. Especially Well, to be fair, I've never played third gen, so I don't actually I didn't actually know that until people actually started talking about it. Okay, okay, yeah. fair enough. Let me tell you let me tell you a story. I when oh, Pokemon no. Ruby <laughs> first when Pokemon Ruby first came out, I was working uh, with Starby.net, and you know, we had the ROMs and stuff. We downloaded it. Yes, I know it was illegal, bad, whatever. And the first thing I noticed is, huh, there's a lot of water here. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, okay, whatever. I just dealt with it because, hey, I'm a Pokemon player. You just go with the flow. Pokemon Red, Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Ruby. You just go with it, you know? Don't complain. Don't bitch and moan. Just play the game. Have fun. Yeah. Here's my it thing. Is. It's a new Pokemon game. Exactly. Shut up. Exactly. <laughs> Pokemon yeah. game, new Pokemon. Hell, they had the they've had the Diancy event going on. You get I that, actually you get the got Diancy. Dan- yeah, I got Diancy right before it expired. Cause like I got the GameStop to buy Smash, oh. and then I'm like, can I have the Diancy code? And they gave it to me, and it was the day before it was supposed to end. I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot to enter it. I entered it in. I'm like, now I have a legendary Pokemon. Yes, and and I will, ad- I will admit I do yep. have one of those uh, power saves things, so, mainly because I like to go through my Pokemon games again. But sometimes I will work do so much on a particular game I don't want to really erase it. So yeah. So like for uh, like Pokemon Y, for example, I'm going through that again. But the previous save I have on there is backed up. It's also good for doing a few other things that you know the kind of hacky things. Mm. You know, I'm actually like hatching <laughs> now that I know that I'm actually getting Alpha Sapphire. I'm actually hatching all of the eggs for my uh, for Y, um, so that when I transfer them over, they're all pretty much one, levels one through five. There you go. And I, I did to fill the similar. Pokedex factor. Yeah, I actually did something similar. I want to say I did it for my initial run of uh, Alpha Saf- uh, Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, that was the one I started with, and uh, of course I. I, I Trained up in Umbreon, naturally, <laughs> because well, of God. course I do. <laughs> and I think I ended up also with Lucario and Gardevoir on my final team as well. Which those are my big three right there. Yeah, I had. Oh. Uh, I, I believe I had a uh, from my final team for Pokemon X. I remember for the league. I remember I had a a Dragonite, which I named Arunus from an RPG I was doing with with my friend at the time. And I believe I also had a Gardevoir. Uh, I tried getting as many Mega Pokemon with the Mega Stone as I can just to beat the league, and I beat the league, and I'm just like, ah, I'm done. I know there's other stuff, but what else should I do? Yeah, I did. The, I finished. Yeah, I finished the contest uh, this weekend. That was kind of fun. Yeah, I'm actually working through the contest on Omega Ruby with the Gardevoir. Uh, I think I've done yeah. like two or three of them, all the way up through Master Rank and everything. It's pretty fun. <laughs> And and oh my god, I love how I love how uh, Feebas has been reworked. Oh my god, so much easier. Like if you were to go to Route 119 right now, go under like the bridge right next to the Weather Control Center or what have you, start fishing under there, you'll always get a Feebas. I'm gonna go check that out. That's right amazing. Now. That is. It's in a different place at night. I think it's at a rock towards the south part of the route. But those those are two places you will always find a feed ass. Otherwise, it's a five percent encounter rate. And poke blocks no longer are you're no longer limited in the amount of poke blocks that that you're able to feed your Pokemon. So you can just keep shoving blues down Feebas's neck and until the beauty maxes out, and then you level it up, and there you go. Huh. Uh, so yes, and you know what? We've been almost maybe almost ten minutes, and I have not done my duty and introduced the three of you yet. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. okay, we're, we're all voices. We're all voices in your head. We're not really here. Yes. We forgot to introduce ourselves. Sorry. Yes. It's okay. It's okay. As you have heard, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have Miss Nightmare. We have Seafara. Hello. And we have Lady Jess. Hey, what's up? All of them here on hand right now. More people, as I said earlier, more people may be coming in as the time goes on. We don't know. It's it's a pretty casual show. Live streamed, of course, hitbox.tv. Uh, if you missed out the live stream, then you missed out on some fun because the pre-show we had a couple of videos go up. I had a Rangoon Rifflet play, and right before that was my new Royal Kill review. 
But uh, it's been a while. I, I if I'm gonna be doing more video reviews, I need to do them more often because that took way too long. Mm. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I realized this is like my third time on this video talk because the very first time was like back in 2012, and 2012, then 2013, like the, either earlier this year or last year. I think it was last year. Cause... Well, this is like my third time on here now. Yeah, it's like once a year we have Miss Nightmare. <laughs> This is my second time. Yeah, they're here. <laughs> and, and and how many times for you now, Jess? Like, what, three, four, around there? Well, considering I filled in for two of your cold hosts two weeks in a row, um, at least three. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully they'll they'll be able to pop in, but, you know. Everybody, everybody, because I sent this out to, like, everybody on the site. Um, because this is a big thing. And everybody that's on the site that can do it is, has been welcome to do it. Um, you know, and, if, and if they can't make it, well, they originally can't make it. I wasn't even supposed to be here to do it. So yeah, and then I was like, you know, I just kind of like forget today. I don't want to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. So she is using this show to procrastinate a bit. No, no, I'm, not <laughs> I'm supposed to be editing, it. but I'm not. Like, oops. <laughs> That's okay. No. I, I I really should at some point. Um, I've been working on a trailer for my next big uh, Gomer project. Uh, Becky's got the artwork in for it already and everything. I'm just working on a trailer, which I want to have released to my patrons next month, and then have it released to the public probably by the first of February. By that point, I should like have everything else ready to go. That way, I could just set up the schedule, let them all run their courses, and just let that run for a bit. That way all I have to worry about are, like, reviews and, um, you know, podcasts. Or even if... Yeah. You, oh, at some point, maybe take a vacation if I can. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, well, Steam. Stop telling me that all my games are on sale when I have no money. I know, I right? Know. Ah! It's like, just about everything on my wish list oh. is on sale. I mean... Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's like the downside with my laptop is, like, I have Steam, but I can't, my laptop won't play any Steam games because the one program I need for it to work won't let me download it because my connection is just crap. No, because it's like when I had to get my new hard hard drive installed, it does the thing with my connection where when I try downloading that program, it won't actually install because it keeps disconnecting my internet connection. Ouch. Yeah, so I can't play games until I okay, actually have a those, new computer. For those of you who really, really want... um. Elder Scrolls Skyrim um, right now um, it is 75% off it's only four ninety nine right now FYI sweet and you should go get it because I got it the last time it was down that low and it's pretty good I don't know if I'll do a Gomer plays of it because it's just that expansive and, and that big it might be a little too big I'll, le I'll leave the Skyrim playing to Spaz Fox <laughs> uh. Who, who I'm really is, wondering a, if I should get Hearthfire because it's only two dollars. Yeah. Is it bad that I've never played Skyrim? <laughs> no, it just means no. that you have a life. Yeah. Oh, I never okay. played it either, so you're not the only one alone, Chris. Yeah, I, never, All right. I didn't play it for myself until this year. Uh, I know when I lived in India, Ilea tried to get me to get into it on her Xbox or whatever. It was like, <laughs> eh. I wasn't into it at the time. On my own with the keyboard and mouse, which I've I've noticed with uh, things like Skyrim, Gary's Mod, um, third person, first person, three original games, or what have you, they're a little bit easier with the keyboard and mouse. At least the newer ones are. Older ones like Mario 64, Banjo Kazooie, or whatever, give me the controller. The newer ones give me the fucking keyboard and mouse, and that includes one of the games that I'm actually uh, working on, you know, getting ready to do next year as well. Ugh. Hmm. And then, uh, I, I will say this about the uh, third game that I'll be doing next year. The last part of the game, it, it kind of forces me to uh, switch over to the actual controller, because you can, you can do both in that game. Because the last part of the game is just so awkward with a keyboard and mouse. It, it's, it really is that awkward. It's like, ah, no, no, <laughs> don't, no, no. not going to work. Oh. Ah, oh, but yeah, so so this has been, uh, 2014 has been a hell of a year. Emphasis on yeah. hell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really. Is. I mean, even... I mean, for... you can spend like all day talking about it. 
just oh, yeah. one thing. <laughs> one thing, two thing, three thing, four thing. Red fish, blue fish, yeah. yellow fish, purple exactly. fish. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but at least, at least for me personally, it started off with a bang. No pun intended. <clears throat> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> and for those who for those who don't know, um, you know, Magfest is usually held first of the year. I was able to go this year, uh, you know, back in January, and that is where I got to meet Becky. I know I've talked about it on previous shows before, but you know, you met her face to face. There was squee, there was hug, and then everybody got diabetes <laughs> <laughs> because it was just awesome. It was great, and and we hooked up. We we started dating there. We, we ironed out, I think, I think considering the fact that she and I are still together now, you know, with it almost, with it coming up on a year, you know, it, yeah. it says, you know, we, we've done a lot of things right. And the biggest thing is communication because <laughs> we talk yeah. just about every day, even if all we do is just trade Facebook messages back and forth, we say something to each other. And, and if something big is happening, we tell one another, you know? That's yeah, that's, that's adorable. Yes. Yeah, it's adorable. It's it's the same thing like I do with Rosen for with our since we've been going well on for like two and a half years now. Yeah. But always the biggest thing is always communication with the, your the one you you love is just trying your best to always communicate. It's just like back. Uh, well, my folks even said this back when people did long distance relationships, they never had that of like. How we are have now is Skype and FaceTime. We just they just had like phone, telephones and they had letters just sending to one another. They could never really be have a lot of these relationships like that. Now it's pretty much possible. Yeah, definitely. Although I still want to you know get up enough money aside and have a trip up to Chicago a couple of times, or even or go the other way, bring her down here. Yes, bring her into the insa insanity that is the Florida taint. Uh, but well, I'll be here and hey, I'll protect her from the insanity. <laughs> well, not just. Well, you're in Florida. You're not far away from Disney World and Universal, so you could go there. Yeah, that's about three, four, five hour drive, depending on traffic. Right. Yes. Uh, but you know, even closer up here, Panama City, Panama City Beach, they have like Ripley's Believe It or Not nearby. Uh, a few other things like, uh, you know, they they got a lot of the touristy, trappy stuff. Uh, they've got what well, has I don't know if it's still touted as largest nightclub in the USA, but Club La Vila, you know, so we can go in and like snark at how overrated it is. <laughs> and that's the only reason I will go there is for snark purposes nowadays. Only reason. Um, uh, and and of course the uh, local theater scene isn't too bad either. We can always check it out. The prices are affordable. And and my uh, alma mater, uh, uh, Chipola over in Mariana, they. They are doing some decent shows, and in fact, if you actually live around the Florida Taint area and, and you want to go and audition, because they have open auditions all the time, they're going to be doing Wizard of Oz in the next few months, and those auditions are going to be like the beginning of January. I'm actually thinking about doing that, because it sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> oh. So, so MAGFest happened, all of the good stuff, and, and, and stuff, and of course... Jess and I were among those in the room when Hagen showed us Chirpy. Oh my god, can we just talk about that for like five seconds and how Lewis and I pretty much ignored it and played Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what because we were, were like, you know what, I don't, like we'd look up every so often and we'd be like, huh, that's a thing. So are you using Charmander? I'm using Charmander. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I, 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 kind of dragged Becky to it and and even though I kept telling her you know you don't know, want to we don't have to but but you know she went in she and I went in and she told me afterwards she's like you know what I'm gonna get you back for this <laughs> and she attempted to the other night she on me the Star Wars holiday special <laughs> yeah which by the way I'm so angry at you that you didn't tell me you were watching that because I would have like been there to rip the crap out of it. Well, it was that, a, well she surprised that me. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that reminds me. Happy Life Day, everybody. Happy Life Day. <laughs> oh, but no, uh -huh. I mean, it, was, it was thrust upon me. She said it was a surprise. She set up the thing, and she said, close your eyes. I closed my eyes, opened it up, and the Star Wars Holiday Special! And, and it kind of fell on a date night, so, you know. Eh, but that's okay. 
Oh, but, you know, it's very riff-worthy. I never pr- Ah, uh, I'm stupid. <laughs> uh, no, I forgot I had, I had to be right back. I did not press enter to show you guys on the chat. God damn. Oh, well. But she's, she's uh. got that. But, um, but yeah, although, you know what? That actually might be an idea for, like, some of us. And just riff the hell on the holiday special. That might that might be a fun thing to do. I I know uh, Becky found it on Daily Motion. Oh dear. Oh my no, god. No, I'm not involved. I'm I'm literally going to put my foot down and say no. Okay. <laughs> it's just <laughs> an idea. It's just an just idea. Oh dear. Uh, does anyone follow uh, Charlie A.K. Spazmaster on Twitter? I, I do. I saw the specialized thing. Is that what you're going to talk about? Oh, what is this? Uh, I'm, I'm, I do I not know have what... Twitter in front of me, so. I know what they're what he's doing. Um, reason why Rose is not here is because um, well, let's actually talk about the interview because I'm there's a reason. Uh, Tony uh, Goldmark taught how the interview was just a harmless film. He and Rosen had saw it. It's an early preview a few months back. Tony th had the bright actually pitched to Rosen. Why don't we do our own parody as remembering as much as we could from watching the movie? And they were filming it today. Yeah. And there's a sock puppet. I don't know. He told me. This is... He told me. <laughs> Goldmark told me in um, in stream when we were playing Cards Against Humanity Friday night. Yeah. Oh, I am loving this. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, so here's my yeah. take on the interview. Okay, here's my thing. My thing is, I don't care about the content of the movie. Not really, because the content of the movie is not the question here. The content of the movie, it could have really been anything in the universe. The fact that Sony yanked it based on a threat when in the world, according to the UN, apparently, or I'm not entirely what the source, is, which source, if it's the UN or the European Union or whatever it is, but it's like a major organization of countries that said that North Korea's military is ranked below Switzerland. So my question is, is why are we taking that threat credibly when Sony is technically a Japanese company anyway, and North Korea is closer to Japan, and I know we're supposed to protect Japan, but let's be real here. The reason they caved was because of fear and money. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. it was. It was like Comedy Central caving to the extremists when, when South Park had their two things, you know, the Cartoon Wars and then the 200-201 episodes. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. Comedy Central did the same thing. I think, honestly, what, here's what they should have done. And, and and it's not just Sony. The movie theaters were a part of this as well. You know yeah. what they should have done is said, "No, fuck you. We're gonna play the movies anyway," and up the security a little bit. You know, thumb your well, nose. Well, that's what they yeah. originally had planned. Yeah. That was the original plan. But the thing is, is that a lot of people were citing the whole thing that happened in Dark Knight Rises when that guy shot all those people in Colorado, yeah. or whatever. See, yeah. See, here's the thing, though. Nobody could have expected that coming except the gunman. Nobody expected that one. This is something that would that you know could possibly. You could have happen. prepared for. Yeah. yeah. You had time yeah. to prepare for this one. The other one. No. no yeah, I know. I, I completely agree with you because it would have come out on Christmas because it's, it was supposed to drop Christmas, and yeah. then in protest, people were like, "Well, let's show Team America: World Police," because yeah. that was a movie that had already come out and nobody said anything, and then people were like, "Well." If you show it, we're going to, like, you know, we're, like, the major movie studios in Hollywood were like, don't show that, because, you know, it's about his dad. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. You're really getting upset off. over a movie that came out almost ten years ago. Are you friggin' kidding me right now? It, it makes no logical sense, especially because, like, the, the funny thing is, like, the day that the interview was pulled and Sony said they would never release it on DVD, which I thought that was kind of a little bit of a bull. T-Fury released a two 24-hour shirts made on the interview stating that how they were pulled. There was one up that I didn't care for, but because it was just Seth Rogen's photoshopped head with duct tape on it saying, like, I went on to see the interview, but all, but um, I think it was like a... I can't remember what it was. It's probably in a T-Fury gallery, but it said something that... um. Uh, all I got was like lousy, sh this lousy shirt. All just, all because uh, since they pulled a money movie that was just f a comedy. It was just a f supposed to be an innocent comedy f movie, and people 
nowadays overreact to a bunch of stuff. We've seen people overreact to so many different things that it's just not a good sign anymore. Well, here's how the, the thing. Here's the big thing that I'm scared about, and I already mentioned this on Twitter when it happened, was I'm worried because James Bond is distributed by Sony Pictures. And James Bond is always on the current events. So, like, when Die Another Day came out, that was against North Korea. That was, like, when Kim Jong-il was, like, doing his thing with that. So I'm, like, really worried that if they make Spectra out to be, like, an international organization or even as close to ISIS as possible, that the studio will yank it and go, well, it will offend ISIS. And I'll be like, okay, it's James Bond. It's going to offend somebody because it's James Bond. Yeah. Like, the whole point of James Bond is to be as misogynistic and racist and stupid as possible because you go to there, like, movies are supposed to be an escape. Like, yeah. they're not supposed to be, like... There are some movies that are political messages, like, like don't get me wrong here, but most people, when, they, when movies started to become popular in the 20s and 30s, and that's why I do my show, is at the time of the 20s and 30s was during the Great Depression, and people went to the movies for a nickel or ten cents to go see Charlie Chaplin to escape, to see Shirley Temple to escape from the realism of their real-world situation of they have no money, they are screwed, let's go to the movie for five, ten cents and say, screw it for, like, a day. Yeah, it's I'm going to go see a couple, a couple of short movies. Who cares? stress relief. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And the fact that they're yanking it and taking it to the political extreme is really stupid. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they, are, they are basically, I'm going to say it right here. I, I've probably said it before. These movie theaters, Sony Pictures, and whoever else said that, they, I think it was Paramount, said, no, you can't show Team America World Play. Yeah, business. Paramount. It was Paramount. Yeah, yeah, you know, you all are are, are cowards. You are pansies, yeah. okay? Seriously. Because this this is North Korea. Like you like you said their army is below Switzerland. And even if mm. they had a semi-competent military, they're all the way the fuck across the ocean. It, it would well, not only that. Well, get over here. Well, not only that, but here's the thing. Okay, two points on that. Number one, Switzerland doesn't have a standing military. Their military is ma militia-based. A country who has no standing military and North Korea ranks below that country, number one. Number two, North Korea, not only can they not, and not only can, is their military ranked below, but everybody's like, oh, the North Koreans. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with the people. It is just the government. And I am really tired of people not being able to differentiate between their people and their government. The same thing happened with the Iraq War and the Afghanistan War. People were like, oh, the Afghans are, or, like, the Afghanis are friggin' screwing with us. No, it's the government and the insurgents. The people were running away. And, like, the people were trying not to get involved because they were like, I'm in a war torn nation. I really don't want to be in a war torn nation. Yeah. Let's try to go away from the yeah. war zone as quickly as possible. Yeah, people. You know they're fleeing. They're they get the fuck out of there. And I will admit, probably in my younger days, and, and even maybe even unintentionally nowadays, I try to mo I try to make sure I watch myself. I do try to make that differentiation. You know, if it's like, okay, this is North Korea. When I say North Korea, I don't mean North Koreans. I mean, well, what's his name? Kim Jong Un, I think. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it's fucking Kim Jong Un. I should probably, you know, you know, be a lot more specific in this case. But sometimes I forget, and I just say, oh, fucking North Korea, you know. When I say that, I usually mean the people in power. Yeah, it's also like the... I don't know if, if anybody watches Archer, the TV series. Uh, they I freaking about love to, Archer. Yeah, they are currently about to release their, I believe, their sixth season. Once, yep. Jer once Jerry starts. Once the ISIS stuff started happening in real life... The creators ch are have changing the name of ISIS in the newest season, be mostly because of the all real life stuff going on with the ISIS stuff going on right now. But that so. makes sense. That makes sense because it's supposed to be a parody of what's happening. So, like, if you have a government organ like ISIS, like changing the name of ISIS and Archer actually makes sense in this context because yeah. ISIS is a real organization, and you don't want to associate with that because ISIS is supposed to be bad news. But if you're changing the name, you're just kind of like, okay, well, you're well, changing the name. And that's okay. Well, 
But it's, yeah. the context will still be the same. It's a bad well, organization the, that Archer is going to deal with. I think the reason, like, they changed it, not just because of that, it's because also, during the fifth season, apparently, I don't remember what it was, they were being something about with spy stuff, so they had to get rid of the spy stuff just for one season, and it was called Archer Vice, where Archer and the whole gang... Oh, to yeah, that's right, I remember to- that. Drug yeah. dealers with cocaine, and they went mainly went at at the end of fifth season the Mallory Man to actually get the ISIS back. But my guess is though they're changing because I have a feeling the first episode they'll say the government didn't want to make it ISIS, trying maybe a fresh new start that I can actually see a brand new name. If you have ISIS again as a name for the agency, no one will want to hire ISIS, especially with all the fucking shit Archer does on the show. It's just freaking insane. Yeah, and then I, I, what I really want to happen is at the very end of the season, just everybody kind of realize that whatever they name the new organization or whatever, and they realize that, oh crap, it really is ISIS, but we didn't realize it because we're dumb as hell. <laughs> yeah, well, and, and that, yeah. that kind of a thing right there, I can understand. Because it, it's it's not somebody saying, you know, no, you can't do this because we are afraid. You know, it's it's a, it's somebody taking this in a direction creatively, like like, you know, somebody on the writing team or whatever is saying, yeah, we're gonna change it up. You know, you know, the network's not being pressured. We're doing this on our own. This is our decision. I I yeah. get behind that a little bit more. That makes sense. And then the other thing was okay. And then. Speaking of speaking of the interview, okay, so Sony got hacked, as we all know. Yes. Yeah. The best oh. thing to come out of that hack is that Sony executives want Idris Elba to be the next James Bond after Daniel Craig, and that makes my heart sing oh. so much. Oh, and it's like they're actually... apologizing for everything by casting a black guy. Yeah. Well, oh, also also the fun... your, your heart is not the only one singing for Idris Elba. <clears throat> yeah. 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 When when that hap- when that happened. Um... Let's just say Becky Squeed. Aww. Yes, I actually. I was, also, I'm really excited. Yes. Yeah, I, I also heard that uh, Sony's been having issues with uh, Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man, so there's a rumor that he was fired as Spidey. So they might get somebody else, and they might actually talk to Marvel about getting uh, the rights back. So. Oh no, Marvel! Marvel and uh, Mar- Marvel has secured Spider-Man for at least a cameo. Which but, sucks. Which sucks. Uh, because hey, yeah. they're going I to know. cast a whole new Spider-Man. They're not even going to try to get Tobey Maguire back. They're not even going to go with Andrew Garfield. They're going to do a new Spider-Man. Which means that if they're going to do a cameo, how the hell are they going to explain that it's Spider-Man in a cameo? Right. Like, other than putting him in the sp- suit and then having it take him off and then it be not either of those two and then go, oh, I'm the new Spider-Man. Or they could do it as Oh, my name is Ben Riley. I'm Spider Man. I, I would love that. that. No, it would, because then I, I could be love... like, "Oh my God, they're doing Clone Saga because they hate us." But whatever. I, no, I would love yeah. if it was if it's Ben <laughs> Riley, or maybe if they got Miles Morales from the Ultimate Spider Man. That Ooh, would be that would be good. Amazing. I'd yeah, be okay be... with a Black Spider Man. Let's be real here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. A lot of people don't know this about me, and, like, I know there's only, like, four people in the chat right now, and two of them are probably us, but um, (laughs) for those of us who don't know, um, my degree is going to be in uh, application of superheroes, and specifically in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and how it applies to teaching values and lessons to our children that we used to learn from comic books themselves. So... You know, I'm taking phase two and I'm breaking it down, like, theoretically, soci- sociologically, psycho- uh, psychologically, and, yeah. like, a bunch of other qualifiers, um, such as you genocide whole, and whatever. Yeah, you can spend a whole semester talking about just Spidey. You know? Well, I'm writing a 120-page master's thesis on it, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, but basically, I, so like, whenever... I actually... Hey Jess, I actually kind of want to see this because you know how uh, how big of a Spidey fan I am. <laughs> no, I know. I know. I actually and it was like really this. funny because I like as soon as they announced that they were going to have that happen, I, the first thing I thought of was you, and then I immediately was like, after I thought of you, I was like, well, Lewis is going to hate this. Oh. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, there's a de- well. Here's the problem with Spider-Man as a as a character, and, and I think oh, I this know, is like I know he has problems. I know he well, has no, problems. it's my specific problem with Spider-Man is that 
every single... Okay, my thing is, is that they got the um, mopey zoo lion yes. Spider-Man together with Tobey Maguire, but Andrew Garfield was actually closer to the Spider-Man than I remember of yes, wisecracking... Yes, yes. Oh, and God, yes. and the fact yeah. that the fact that they're getting rid of him, and I'm like, okay, so are you going with Mopey Zoo Lion? Are you going with a mixture? Like, I don't know what Marvel's gonna do, and I'm like really scared because they actually found a close to working formula. Now, granted, I didn't see Amazing Spider-Man two, so I can't really talk about that. But I saw, um, but I saw. Th- the uh, first one, and I thought the fact that I thought Amazing Spider-Man one was pretty good, you know. So, I mean, obviously every movie has its problems. Even Avengers had its problems. It was too short, I, but yeah, yeah, that was the only problem with the Avengers. Did anyone else notice that that it was too short? That was the only problem it had. Uh, I actually I haven't didn't... seen it yet. I, I, I think we have the DVD. Of it's on Netflix. I... Go do it now. We have. I'm not gonna do it now. We're doing a show. No, 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 no. You're going to watch it now, or we're going to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, think uh, I, I can't do that. I mean, you know, this goes up on YouTube. Well, I'd get, I'd get I actually, slammed up the butt so hard with DM, DMCs and, and, and everything. It's like, no. Which, speaking well, of I, YouTube and, and their DMCs and the bots and everything, fuck well, just, UMG. Watch, well, just watch it on uh, you know, your TV just while, while you're streaming. You're like, oh my god, look, there's the Hulk. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually... Hey, well, somebody, I'm saying... somebody has got to host the show, and that then that's me. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, I never felt the Avengers was short. I, it actually was very nice for me. I think the one I that actually I didn't think was like felt very long. I that long, but it felt like a nice long. Was actually Guardians of the Galaxy. It felt like a very very nice film. It okay. felt like it's real length time. Casey, that's an amazing segue because now we can talk about like our top movies of 2014. Yes. Oh yes. dear God. <laughs> I am. Okay. I will so. Admit, I, am, I am not very, very versed. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the All movies right. that I've have seen, movies I have seen, um, at least recent. Uh, I think the most recent movie I've seen that I actually have that it was came out within. I, I think it came out last year. Um, I only just recently saw Frozen. And so that's like the most recent movie that I, in terms of when it was produced. Yeah, that was 2013. Yeah. But <laughs> okay, 2014 movies. Okay. Yes. Um, Guardians was awesome. Um, yes. Uh, Captain America: The Winter Soldier was my favorite movie this year, hands down. It was just amazing. Pretty- Everything about it was great, and I really felt like it was a comic book. Like I felt more like it was a comic book movie as opposed to a comic book movie so if if you guys caught the emphasis if not the, it, sorry um but um then the other two movies that i really liked this year which uh, okay confession i have not i did not see um nymphomaniac at all i was supposed to see it with kyle but bleh and the other thing i didn't see that i really wanted to see this um year was um the grand budapest hotel which is the Wes uh-huh. Anderson movie that I wanted to see, but I didn't see those. Um, that being said, I saw Only Lovers Left Alive, which was the greatest Tilda Swinton movie ever. And um, I went to go see that with a friend of mine, so much so that immediately after the movie was done, I bought the soundtrack on iTunes. Like, the music was that good. Jim Jarmus did, did a fantastic job with that movie. Um, he, his take on vampires was amazing. And the other movie, which I know Casey is really, really a huge fan of as well, is... The last movie I saw this year was Big Hero 6, and I adored Big Hero 6. It, I it, love, yeah. You know, I really, I cried. I cried during the movie, and it wasn't because of the movie itself. It was because I, had, I saw it two weeks after, like two or three weeks after my grandfather's funeral, and uh, that was the kind of movie gosh. that he would have loved. And I actually called my mom at work, and I was like, I, saw, I just saw Big Hero 6, and she's like, how was it? I was like... It was really awesome. It was so the kind of movie that, like, Pepe would totally go see with me. And it was, like, cute, and it was adorable, and it had superheroes in it, and it was really great, and whatever. And she was like, oh, that's so sweet. And I was like, yeah. And, you know, as most people know, that right now um, I cannot see a Spider-Man movie because um, Spider-Man was my grandfather's favorite character. It's one of the reasons I'm not seeing Amazing Spider-Man 2 just yet, Um, you know, 
for that reason, but um, yeah, but Big Hero 6 was probably the most adorable movie I saw this year, but my favorite movie was definitely Cap, Winter Soldier. Okay, I'm going to shut up yeah. now and let somebody else talk. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, that's fine, that's fine. I love Captain America too, and I love Guardians of the Galaxy. Those were my two big movies for this, uh, this year. I didn't really see that many movies because, you know, I had stuff happening and stuff. Know, life happens, whatever. I wanted to see Lord of the Rings. I still could. I mean, still playing. And I was like, do I want to sit for three hours in a movie theater? <laughs> and I can't find someone to go with. Yeah. You know. I might see it next week with a friend of mine. You know, we just gotta hatch out a couple of plans. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, th I think it was somebody suggested uh, Steve the Wicked and I go see that Saving Christmas movie that Kirk Cameron put out. Because oh, it was playing up in Dothan, Alabama, which is like about 20 miles away. And we're both within driving distance. And and like, and he's like, dude, if you go it, I'm going with you. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, hey, no, Gomer, you and Steve go see Into the Woods instead. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want to go see Into the Woods. I want to see Into the Woods, but I'm like, yeah. I don't know if I want to see it because I'm like, I want to see it because Meryl Streep. But then I'm like. But then I saw the poster and I was like, Johnny Depp as the wolf. And the first thing in my brain that popped into it was a wolf in a Captain Jack Sparrow outfit. Not going to yeah. lie. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit. For, there's some movies that weren't really listed. I, we got to for, not forget about the Lego movie. We can't forget that the Lego <gasps> movie was freaking Oh my god, awesome. how the hell did I forget about the Lego movie? Everything is awesome. Everything is cool. Okay. And you're right, part of just, a team. Oh, yeah, uh, Legos. I, yeah. I, actually going to, I introduced uh, my nephew to Legos. Star Wars Legos, Aww. he loves them. You yeah, know what I love about the Lego movie? It was so much more than I expected it to be. Like, when I first saw the trailer, I was like, okay, it's the Lego movie. Like, it's a movie about Legos. But no, it had a real, like, awesome story, and it was, like, so much better than I was expecting. Yeah, no, it took me a, a second viewing to see with a friend of mine to realize... That the first, that it was not all stop motion lo Legos. It was all freaking CGI with a Lego texture overtone on it. And I'm like, you're too beautiful to be real. <laughs> <laughs> that's, lir that is, that's literally how it is when you really relook at it. They actually scan textures on actual Legos and place them on everything. That's why it feels like it looks like it's a stop motion film, but it's really all CGI just with a wonderful texture. It's a very big step up for Lego, to say the very least. Although, could you imagine how long that movie would have taken if it was all stop motion? Well, if it was stop motion. It probably wouldn't have come out until like 2016, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, more realistically, uh, stop motion takes. Nowadays, stop motion can go for two years now. So. If they announced it like two, like two back in twenty twelve, it would be out for twenty fourteen. Yeah. So, um, another movie that I actually saw that I that for, very big confession here is that uh, before I saw this movie, I had not seen the Muppets film since I was a kid. My first ever Muppets film I ever saw in theaters was Muppets Most Wanted. I saw that in California, and made me relove the Muppets again. Hey. It. It made me feel super happy. My favorite song is um, the number one, number two song in the movie where you have a uh, Constantine with um, Ricky Carver singing. I, Ricky Carver can do very good when he's singing and act and playing like a villain in a, in a very funny movie. And I just love that song. And I'm just like, you know what this song would do very great as? A nice parody song that had some trick with the camera, Spaz Master Doggins, and myself in it. Because like you, no, because if you compare it, those three do Disney theme parks. I do too, but I'm like the very much the last person people will think about. Because like I'm slowly trying to do de Disney theme park stuff. Well, more theme park stuff. Because like I've done the Malibu Beach Party show. Yeah. From and um, I want to try. Maybe I want to do that. I want to do it as a parody song for a future bit crossover I ever, ever do with all three of them, which I, I don't know if it'll be. I hope for a future, not now, but for a future. It'll be right. fucking amazing. <laughs> and awesome. I, I really, well, also, oh god, I really need to get down to Disney World at some point. And and well, just because I have, I, I actually got for Christmas, I got a, a GoPro camera from my dad. 
Ooh, fancy. Nice. Like, so I can like slap this fucker on a hat or something, strap it to a hat, walk around Disney World. Hey, how you doing? Actually, actually, um, be very, very careful. Oh, are, are they? Would they get paranoid about that? I. Okay. Okay. So. No, 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 no! <laughs> this no camera. It's no, no, no! This no camera. This is uh. uh uh, Mendo. No, actually, yes. No, I can tell you right now the very interesting story I've learned from Rosen from uh, when he was helping uh, Tony Goldmark film for you know his season three of Some Dark with the Camera at Universal Studios Hollywood. Universal Studios Hollywood is okay with you filming right there, and they're okay if you have a tripod set down. They are because it's a you're on the literal filming lot. They're okay with that. Oh. And I'm just like. You ne wait, they're okay with that? You never got- they never- they didn't come out to say put the tripod away? And they're like- and Rose is like, nope, I'm like... What logic is this? <laughs> Which, interestingly enough, the day we're streaming and recording this, uh, the ABGN did a review of, like, the Universal Adventure thing on GameCube, which- oh, Which we actually- I, I think we have a copy of around here somewhere. Oh, I played that game as a kid. I could never beat it. I did love it because it's just the atmosphere alone. Because it felt like I was go at the Universal Parks again as a kid. Yeah, it, it, it grew real boring for me because it's like, okay, we want to go on the ride. Well, you can't go on the ride yet. You know, and yeah, you, you have to go around, pick up trash, greet, peek, greet characters, and it's just really. And uh, yeah, it's 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 a bad game. It's like that's why people like to compare. Um, the Disney uh, can the Disneyland Connect game. How do you see that's l much better because you're actually in the Disney theme park Disneyland than you are with that of an, you know, the Universal game. Because th I've seen big comparisons of that. It's just wow. Yeah. Oh lordy. Yeah. So. But I think but I think the one thing for movies we should say is that uh there's still we're almost at the we're in December. We're about to be the end of 2014 for films. And I think the two films I'm actually more are very interested in is, of course, we've talked about Into the Woods. Oh, yeah. Yay. And another is actually, um, I hate that not people are seeing this because I think it's Tim Burton is doing pretty much going into it. Something he used to be good at is Big Eyes. For those who don't know, Big Eyes is based off an actual story, a true story. Of Margaret Keene, who's known for the big eye children paintings. This is her story about pretty much of uh, how her husband took credit for her paintings, and when she divorced him, he wouldn't give the rights, and he had to sell a big court until the judge said, You know what? I want you two to paint the big eyes. The husband kept giving excuses until the Margaret Keene sat there for over an hour painting. And she got her rights back. <laughs> and I've seen the trailer. I've seen this. This is mu uh, very much one of the best works I think Tim Burton has done in the last couple of years. It's better than Dark Shadows combined. It goes without saying that Tim Burton can do well in a nice drama by drama type sense that still has a bit of fantasy to it, but can do it just well. It feels like Big Fish. If that's what I feel like with. Big Eyes, it feels like Big Fish, but in a better drama, drama way, and he's done Ed Wood. He's going back to the genres that people would love to see him do again. Because he's... Well, because he's, he's done Dark Fantasy so many times that count, and he's used the same people. Cough, Johnny Depp, and Hellbound, Carter, Cough. But, um, Big Eyes, it has people that uh, Bernard has not worked with before. Amy Adams, Chris, Christoph Waltz, uh, there are two people I've never seen uh, Burton work with before, and I've seen, and this film's already been nominated for the Golden Globe Awards already. Wow. This has already been, yeah, it's already been, it's not out yet, it's already been nominated for Golden Globe Awards, and it's amazing. And the only th person I've seen, I'm actually looking on the, on the, his, the page for the movie right now, the only person to come back to actually collaborate with Tim Burton again is Danny Elfman for music. But apparently the budget's like ten wait the wow I never seen a budget this low for a burn film it's like only ten million dollars. I never wow. seen a budget I never seen well oh well, maybe given that it's a more of a biographical drama or maybe because it's not gonna be super crazy for a Tim Burton film 
because yeah. this is a based on true story type thing. So I am looking forward to this film. And I just realized that I'm I am real dear God. Am I right about who this person is? <laughs> I'm looking on um oh yes. I just realized that one of the guys who played one of the Sherman brothers from Saving Mr. Banks is in the big eyes too. <laughs> I recognize his face. Oh yeah, didn't didn't that movie come out this year too? Uh, Saving Mr. Banks or was that no, last that, year? That last year that in was December. Last year. My movies yeah. are, are 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 running together. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but I am. I think Big Eyes and Into the Woods are two, two films I want to try and see. For I don't know if I'll have time for this month because I'm trying my best to get a lot of things done. But I think. Like, those are two films I want to see, because I've heard from Music Hell's Twitter, she saw, like, an early screening, I think, of Into the Woods, and she, I think she enjoyed it from when I remember her seeing her Twitter. Huh? Yeah, I think. I can't remember. But I haven't heard anything yet from Big Eyes, but I am very excited. And, yeah, speak, speaking of Into the Woods, Into the, like, Golden Globes, Into the Woods is also nominated for Golden Globes, too. Nice. It's not even out yet, and I'm like... <laughs> Hmm, Is this the Oscars all over again? Seriously? Apparently. apparently. <laughs> Although, you know what? Speaking of that, I, I had discovered something last night. It, it's kind of, kind of, you know, no big deal for me to say that, you know, I follow porn stars. And I'm not a politician, so I don't get in trouble for it. Mm -mm. Uh, but I follow that some. You know and, of. Well, yeah. <laughs> but but no, I, I follow some, and they were talking about the uh, Adult Video Network Awards. You know, it, it's basically the porn version of the Oscars, and I like how they do it because I got a little curious. <laughs> now, now check this the out. Best, get... And the best blowjob goes to actually oh. actually they don't have that. But oh really? Yeah, really. But it's, which it's, is a it's terrible simplified. shame because they should. They should. <laughs> but okay, okay. So I checked it out, and what, how they get. How how winners are, are nominated and, and voted for and won and everything is it's all consumer voted, you know, because you go in there, you vote for your top five. I think I started out with uh, best boobs. Yes, that is a category. And you vote for your top oh, five. God. You go to the next one, uh, and, you know, you vote for top five. Um, and it keeps on going like that. And you, the viewer, are picking who is the best. You don't have this fucking committee of people who are just directors and, and producers choosing this. You have the people, the consumer, say, yeah, we like this. We think this deserves an award. And yeah. I think Hollywood would do well to follow that example. Um, Gomer, Hollywood has followed that example. Nope. Look at the MTV Music Awards. MTV Movie Awards, to say. Okay. They've had, yeah, they have teens do that, and even though for some things that should be actually awesome to win, they go for the stupid things. Like, I think I remember how Twilight Break came down won a bunch of awards one year from MTV. Okay, good point. Although, to, to clarify a little bit more, I'm talking like the big Hollywood, like Oscars, Golden Globes. You know, the ones yeah. that, that, yeah. The, to clarify find myself a little bit, I was, I, I was not clear on that one. Okay, and... And Jess is going to have to bail for right now. Uh, do you have any last words before you bail out, Jess? Or um, Last words, huh? Yeah. Um, this just... can't possibly end badly. <laughs> uh, I regret I... nothing! <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of like the best D&D &D words ever. Like, ooh, what's this doing here? Touches. Explosion. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's my send off. There you go. There I'm you gonna go. touch this thing. It's going to explode. <laughs> All right. So, so we're gonna keep soldiering on. Like I said, this is a very casual show. So people will be coming and going, and somebody's already going. So um... yeah, I would stick around, but I, I, I should really get stuff done. Yeah. Who are you using the like, yeah. I should be a responsible adult. <laughs> yes. yes, you should. <laughs> I don't Jack want to be, but I should. All right. Yeah. All right, so yes, it's, check, it's great, great to printed, have you. Uh, yeah, I, I see. Uh, but yes, I it was. Oh happy yeah, on um, the show again and yeah, and, all that um, stuff. and if you guys want to check out my stuff, um, Fool's Gold, um, Fool's Gold uh, dot blogspot dot com. Although starting in February, at some point, I will have a website because um, grad school is um, helping me set up a website in my my uh, residency class, which is going to be awesome. Nice. Um, 
and uh, I'm hoping to like buy a domain name possibly and blah blah blah. Um, and uh, if you want to find me on Facebook, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Raven Allegria 13 um, and uh, I'm on RT Gomer Productions and on Nerdvice. So uh, check me out. I'm actually in the middle of a smack dab in the middle of the six episode extravaganza on James Bond. Um, my new episode will be dropping tomorrow. That will be Dr. No. And then next Monday will be From Russia with Love. And January 6th, I am dropping Goldfinger. So, um, yeah. So it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Have fun with the rest of your stream. All right. It's great to have you on, Jess. Thank you for coming. No problem. Bye, Many times. Later. Bye. Uh, let me know how that uh... Let me know how that thesis goes. I'm kind of interested in that. I'm All actually right, going to be sending it out to a bunch of people, so um, I'll put you on the list. Alright. Yeah, woohoo! Alright, All right. Bye. All right. Later. See you, Jess. Bye! Bye. <laughs> Alrighty. And then there and then were there... three. Yes, and then there were three. And that's okay. The show goes on. Uh, she had to leave, and now now I get to segue kind of more back towards the beginning of the year, because there were there was a lot of things that went on. Um... We're about mm -hmm. halfway mark. Let's dip low, because we've got to dip low. Oh, uh, don't! Can we not dip low? We we have to. We have oh, to. Uh, but but just remember, we dip low, we'll come back up. Yay! We'll come back up from this, so. You so promise. Because... I'm gonna hold you to that, man. You promised. <laughs> yeah, but everybody who does listening in our in our little community, um, you know community type thing we do pay attention to a lot of uh, you know, a lot of celebrity stuff whether it's big name celebrities or just celebrities among our circle um is like i had said earlier for me 2014 started off with a bang no pun intended and then later that month we the the first blow hit and oh no yeah and that was yeah that was when we all learned that um uh, <sighs> justin uh juario he committed suicide yeah, uh, I, I I had thought about whether or not I wanted to put this in and then talk about it, but it's like you know what, everybody's going to be thinking about it. Everybody's going to be remembering. Yeah, it. just pull it off like a bandaid. Just pull it off like a bandaid. Yeah. Yeah. And and for my part, you know, I held up decently well until um, until I talked to somebody and they just started breaking down, and that's when I lost it and started breaking down myself. And in, in fact, we even have uh, a a whole episode of constructive deconstruction dedicated to him, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So um, my yeah my experience with that day, I I think I cried for two hours because like I was starting to become a nice, very good friend with Justin, and it I when didn't believe it. I had to look around. And I, pretty much like everybody else, it, it's difficult, and especially when you see so a sweet person like that, it, you don't really think that could happen, but then it does, and it's like everything changes. You don't know exactly what to do about it, and and all I think I have I, to this day, I haven't been able to watch the show mostly because it's just I don't want to bring painful very hard memories but it's just like sometimes I would forget when he cameos in something or if he like or if the crossover his final crossover he did with Nash uh, uh, Lewis and uh, uh, Film Brain, brain. Yeah. and Film Brain on um, Doctor Strange uh, it was just it's and just so fun just seeing that again just I think that's why I, I, I know I should really go back to watching Justin's videos again because it's just it's a moment just to remember how he was, how he smiled, how it was, just knowing that he was there and just yeah. knowing to yeah. that it's still a moment to make people happy. I mean, I it took me time, but uh, I have I had a friend of mine actually introduce me to Garo, something that uh, Justin had taken a look at, a Famicom writer, mostly one of the movies, but I had watched that movie with that just end up taking a look at it, and I'm just like, oh, now I remember this is what he just did. Um, oh, I almost had some of it, but I just remembered that Justin show was pretty much what wanted me to see more of the Super Sentai, yeah, over in Japan. And mostly, I just try my best to remember the good moments because I've seen that done for so many people. Like, 
I do know the crazy crew with a uh, Katie Marie Zenith, a Dodger Zion, and I think a few, a few, a lot of others. They actually, it's on YouTube. I don't, I'm trying to remember exactly where on, on YouTube. They did like a three part dedication of trying different things in memory of Justin. Yeah, like one, yeah. yeah, yeah, part one. Yeah, this whole part two is 45 minutes long. It's all trying different ramen, as many ramen as they could. And I'm just looking at all this. I'm just like, I didn't know as many ramen flavors existed. It was so much. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. All the ramen, all the ramen in the world. But yeah. I, this, I think that's, but always the best thing to remember is that, yeah, we lose people, but they will still be in our hearts and in our memories. They will always have a big impact on everybody, no matter what. And yeah. I'm always, yeah. I've been handling it pretty well. I mean, I've been talking to you guys about it, talking to everybody about it. You know, it's kind of made me feel better because he was my mentor, you know, he was my friend. And I was hit pretty hard with it. We all were. And, you know, we just kind of all came together, didn't we, as a community during this whole mess. I mean, that's the one thing we can take away that we kind of came together, you know. Like Nash said, Remember on that emergency stream, you know, you, you might find yourself talking to someone you haven't talked to in a while. I remember when it happened, I went straight to Gomer, and the first word out of my mouth was, oh, my God, Katie. You know, yeah. that's how connected, that's how yeah. connected this whole community well, is. Yeah, I that, see. Was, that was mine and Becky's first thought, too. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've actually seen that Katie, uh, actually, Katie has the biggest, uh, big growth over this year from that is that she lost a very good friend and all of us were there helping her and she's gotten so much better. She still misses Justin, and Justin, but she's oh, gotten better, yeah. so much better. And she is, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. But the crying child is ruining the thing. I, as I said earlier, this, we have a child here. They're normally not here, but you know, yeah. Uh, so well, I did but, not expect him to get that loud right outside my door. <laughs> yeah, but I've but Apologies, seen on like online. <laughs> yeah, but seeing online, Katie's gotten so much better. She's even start, started dating as well. She's yeah. in a relationship, and I'm just I'm feeling very happy for her. Yes. I'm feeling a lot of us have moved on, but we still have our own ways to, of doing stuff. So, especially uh, Mars Girl yeah. and her husband Josh are working on the Famicom Rider movie more as like yeah. the final tribute. Uh, to yeah, that. I, yeah, I did. A, yeah, I filmed a little cameo for that. I really, really, really wanted to be a part of that. And it, Kaylin really understood that. And it's like, yeah, I just really wanted to be a part of yeah. that. I did like a couple comics dedicated to him. I dedicated him to him in my videos and stuff. I done all I can, but I really, really, really wanted to be a part of that famous comic writer thing because he actually gave me uh, plans for the helmet, and I never really had a chance to really make a helmet. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I actually still have one the the production shirts I had bought from Magfest 2013, and I remember like it was right after Justin's panel uh, he did, and I because like he was going to sell the shirts, I'm like I wanted to get a shirt from it because I liked the design. I went to him and I sat, tried getting a shirt that was for my size, but he had like a I think it was only a lar like an extra. A large or extra large and then it was like the only shirt size they had and it was like two shirts left and I bought one of them and I still have the shirt I was actually looking at the shirt I wore the shirt yesterday I was just I had a moment just looking at it, just remembering how I actually got the shirt in the first place um, it's a big thing and you know what my last you know like actual face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with Justin was at Magfest, and yeah. I'm, I'm looking at the thing that that we interacted over. It's a uh, it's a painting done by a square painter. It's a, the ending scene of Mega Man Three, like right, right. Mega Man's in the field. He looks in the sky. There's the the silhouette of Proto Man up. There. Not silhouette, but um, but there's the image of Proto Man up in the sky, and he, he translated that to a painting, and that was up for a raffle. And I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to enter it. I entered it, and I won. <laughs> you won the painting? Where's the painting now? It's hanging up in my, on, on my wall right now. <laughs> right. 
Wow. It was it was it was a bit of a pain to get it home because I was mega busting the entire way, but I managed and it's and managed it in one piece through that hellacious snowstorm. And Ooh. Justin was there helping uh, helping them uh, with the raffle and everything. Yeah. The last time I've ever seen Justin, I wasn't able to talk with him because, like, he had a bunch of people. I think at the table, it was, um, I was with uh, Ven and Rose, and then we had uh, Greg and Erica because uh, Ven was trying to wait for his wife, uh, Mouse, uh, after talking with Jorio. This was, like, around midnight. I think it was on the day that uh, I think filmed a bunch of stuff that day, and I was just, we are just seeing Justin. I... I wanted to say hi to Justin, but he had a lot of people talking with him, and so I figured I would do it another day, but I never had a chance to. Uh, yeah. That happens, and you know, yeah, the last, you never know what's yeah. going to happen. Yeah. The last time I talked to Justin was just a couple of days. It was, on, it was just like on Skype. He was talking on uh, Nash's stream about, you know, his dog and stuff, and I already knew about the dog, and it's like, hey, I hope uh, you know, the dog feels better, and... Oh, the last time we talked, we just talked about a little bit, talked about plans for, uh, you know, January, and I told him about my videos, and I was going to link them to something, and I never really got a chance to, and that was the last time I ever talked to him it was on Skype. Mm. Uh, yeah, but, uh, but it, I mean, I've yet to see, I know the Con Bravo this year, they did a Feral Justin Memorial thing, I have yet to watch it because I don't want to have myself crying throughout the whole thing, especially when you have people talking about uh, Justin, like uh, you got Dr. Holocaust, who's wor who worked with Justin during uh, Kanji, like almost two years ago, on a video that Doc had released a while after Justin's death in memory of him. Yeah. And, and I was just I was, that was always a video I was always looking forward to seeing from Doc Dr. Holocaust because I watched Dr. Holocaust's shows. He he shows so much fun because you got like a steampunk mad scientist trying his best to improve the world and make it better and just he's a fun seems like a very fun person and just no just I remember him I think talking about that during like the Con Bravo video that um he was going to Con Bravo he talked about a little bit of, of much he could do about Justin. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to get emotional. This is so emotional. Yeah, uh. I know. I know uh, Holly, you know Holly Christine, who was doing a lot of help with that, and and it, it was kind of, and she ended up not being able to make Con Bravo because her body hated her at that point. Yeah, I, I, I think that's what it was. And, yeah, but yeah, but I think she got was, sick. Yeah, she did. And a lot of that stuff, it still came together, and she was like a big part of it, from what I understand. Mm. So uh, that, yeah. that just that just goes to tell you how awesome Holly is. <laughs> yeah. 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 So so I, Holly, if you're listening, and you ever wonder what I say about you behind your back, I just say you're awesome. There you go. Well, <laughs> well, that's true. She question, is. Though. Yes. Yeah. I have a question. Is is Holly one of my bosses on your site now? I don't think so. I, I think. Holly is, is basically just a co-host of mine on two of my shows, and then she admins, and I think she's like editor in chief over on Nerdvice. So, so in terms in terms of that, she she has she is a higher up on Nerdvice, but not on our site. Oh. So yeah. Oh. I... <laughs> you know, oh, she and I she and I had a, had a had a talk about that one. It was like, well, wait a minute. So so if I'm your boss on the podcast and you're my boss on Nerdvice, wait 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 wait. How does that work? She's like, she's like, I work for myself. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah. Yeah. I did yeah. see that. Uh, yeah, I did see that Con Bravo video. I made sure I wasn't watching it alone. Yeah. When you watch it, make sure you're with somebody, you know, get them on Skype with you and just kind of like watch the video. You'll feel much better. Make sure you have a tissue box with you. That's all I can tell you. There, there have been other big, big names and big inspiration people that we have lost throughout this year, too. Um, mm. The other big one that's coming immediately to mind is uh, Robin Williams. Yeah. Oh, <sighs> Also tragically uh, committed suicide this year, and mm. um, and you know he I, I'm beginning to see more and more as I look at some of my comedies, some of my mannerisms or whatever. 
there are times where bits of him do, do pop out from me. Um, <laughs> I, I watched, you know, I watched the hell out of Aladdin. I watched the hell out of Return mm. of Jafar, even though he wasn't in it. Um, <laughs> he was um, in the third one. <laughs> he was in the third one, but I hadn't seen the third one yet. Um, oh. I watched Mrs. Doubtfire. Um, you know, and I loved his stand-up. I loved mm. watching and listening to his stand-up. And, and, like, to the point to where if I would, like, drive, or drive somewhere, i just pop one of the CDs in and just drive. You know, and to get to anywhere substantial around here, you know, like Panama City or whatever, it takes about a full CD of comedy to get me there in terms of time. So, so yeah. I would always listen to him, and I know I've picked up some stuff from him, among a few others, like, especially lately, George Carlin. But, um... <laughs> but I'm, I, wouldn't, I wonder if, if Carlin... Had influenced uh, Robin Williams as well, because that would be that would be an interesting, an interesting uh, turn there. Uh, yeah. But... Um, I, th yeah, for myself, I don't. I, I'm trying to recall. The, like most I've seen from Robin Williams, that, that of course, like Aladdin. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen other films he's been in. I can't really remember, because there's like so much. Oh, Night of the I remember seeing him in. I do, I'm just trying to remember what else. But, um, I Hulk. don't remember what... Huh? Hook. Yeah, Hook. Yeah, I don't... Never saw a Hook. I saw pieces of Hook. Never really saw it in full. Hmm. Uh, but, um, Good Morning Vietnam? Nope. I have not seen Good Morning Vietnam. I should. I really should. Yeah, make, should. yeah here's a game for me, for Casey. You make a list of movies. Say the movie to see whether or not she has seen them or not. That's a game that goes with me for my friends and I. And just, I'm like, I that list just can be range a lot. It's just I never <laughs> see a lot of films for myself. Yeah, oh. it's like when I heard that that Robin Williams had had passed and he had committed suicide. I immediately, you know, got, you know, I, I think I had to go and re grab them from YouTube because I don't. I didn't have the money to get them off of iTunes for one thing, and for another thing, I had lost the copies I'd already had. So I had to go grab like his two la his last two specials, and I just sat there and watched them, and just it's like yeah, you know, this is, yeah, this this is part of what he is leaving behind. And in fact, his last movie, I, th I think Night of the Museum Three is his last movie. It just came out two yeah. days ago. Yeah, and it just got released. So that the last the last completed project that he was in. There you go, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's also, like, a... The one... The two things I'm, I know I've... I know I've talked with about Aladdin that that was, like, one of the films I got introduced to as a kid for him, but the two things I, I know I loved Robin Williams in is um that one episode he started in Whose Line Is It Anyway? I say is one of his best just for improv the way he goes off with a... Interacts with Wayne Brady, uh, Ryan Stiles, Colin Mockery, and Drew Carey. I like the way he interacts with them. Another is people forgot about the, how he did this one. Um, is back when Walt Disney World, uh, Disney Hollywood Studios, originally called Disney MGM Studios, they had the original Disney's well, a tour of the Disney Animation Studios when there was an actual stu animation studio in Florida. There was. The t you get your small, little small tour, and you had Robin Williams as a uh, one, the actual small guest that would actually show the process on how things get animated. He would do like he go from the has his voice recorded, and that his voice goes into their own version of a Robin Williams Lost Boy. This is like apparently I looked online as like right is like a couple years before he did Hook, so it's like almost foreshadowing at the very least. Nice. And the animation was wonderful. It was very well done, and. It was pretty much one of the earliest things that got me to love animation. Yeah. I'm just always see, remembering that. I want to review that for my show because it just talk about the history of the magic of Disney animation is just a wonderful thing because it's a piece of history. And because now there's no longer animation studio in Florida. It's just a big, giant, empty building that will, will be sometimes housed for the Disney wedding. So when you're saying, no, I'm not kidding. There's like actually one piece that if you look on Disney weddings, where you can have to have your reception in there or your after wedding party in there, and I'm just like, well then, uh, use it for something good, damn it. Yeah, I mean weddings are fun and fine, and having your reception is fine, but come on, you can do more than that. Just a little well, bit. <laughs> yeah. Oh lordy, oh god, there was oh, oh Mork and Mindy. 
Ah, uh, yeah, Mork and Mindy. That was a that was a good show. Yeah, which I never watched it. <laughs> I remember watching it a little bit when I was a kid. Um, you know, Nanu Nanu, all that good stuff. Came to Earth yep. in an egg, and there's yep. like there's like a, a photo set going around. I don't know if it's all photos or if it's gifts or whatever. Of like one of his last speech, one of one of the uh, end of episode speeches he's making back <laughs> home, and he talks about loneliness. And to see that now, and then think about you know the the, the joining thing between both uh, Justin's death and Robin Williams's death is the fact that you know depression, I, I believe, yeah. is a, like a big thing that played a part yes. of it. And everybody who suffers from depression, you know, it 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 is hard. I mean, mm -hmm. I've even you know that, and that's even caused me to look at some of the stuff I know and think maybe I might have it. I'm not going to say – again, I've said it on shows before. I might have it. I'm not going to say for sure whether or not I do because – Well, you really, shouldn't, you really shouldn't self-diagnose yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's why I'm saying you know, I suspect, but I'm also not sure. So yeah, unless the... I can go and see a doctor, which in, in and of itself is a pain in the ass because <laughs> money. Yeah. And and I actually speaking of of which we can segue more into like more political stuff here. Um, oh, don't let the political stuff. Well, we gotta well we gotta talk about it at some point anyway because we yeah. gotta talk about everything. Um, Boo! I this know. is part of this is part of us getting us back to the good stuff. So yes. band yeah. gotta get back up there. Gotta get back up there. Um, yep. Yeah. But I actually tried to uh, get in the marketplace, get on Medicaid or whatever to help. You know, so I could maybe see a doctor, you know, physical, you know, mental, what have you. And because Florida is one of those states that didn't extend Medicaid under Obamacare or what have you, I can't get it. Fuck you, Rick Scott. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. You know, marketplace is available, so if I had the money, I could go and buy my insurance. Sure. You know, but I, I can't get on Medicaid, so fuck you, Rick Scott. Although, there apparently there's like a penalty if you're able to get... Um, insurance and you can, and you don't, you know, there's there's like a small penalty or whatever. But I am exempt from that because I can't get it because I can't get on Medicaid and I don't make enough to pay for insurance. So the government's like, okay, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so you know, silver lining, I guess. And, and and of course we talk Obamacare and and it was supposed to be better, but it's not, and it's because. Well the Republicans. Yeah, the fucking G O goddamn P, which we I swear we rip on those almost every sh every fucking week. We do. Yeah, we do. They typically do something stupid or irritating, like yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. You know how DC Comics does something stupid lately? They should change that to have the Republicans done something stupid lately. Yeah, that should be added to the drinking game. We talk to Republicans, take a shot. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And if the Republicans do something monumentally stupid or, 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 you know, like, like, oh, God, there's like one lawmaker in Missouri who's trying to push a legitimate rape bill. I think it's how the news organization called it. What? Um, yeah. You know, women, oh, if, if a woman is raped, then she should report it. You know, that's the only way rape is legitimate or whatever. And that's the only way she should have an abortion because, of course, it's anti-abortion. God. Because, because that's the Republican game, ladies and gentlemen. That it, that is that is their game. They want to gain control of everybody and give it. They want everybody to be controlled by the upper one percent. They want to go back to the whole 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 class system where they have everything. Everybody else has nothing, and fuck them anyway. Yeah, and then here's the problem with that. I know I don't talk about political stuff because it's just, uh, yeah, but. But from the voting from November, what who what won? Did we want we want the world to be better? But what happened? Yeah. Republicans fucking won almost half, almost three fourths of the United States or all of it. I don't know. That means, yeah, anything Obama has to do, it's gonna be that he, much he harder. Yeah, but then he actually – I remember him once that happened, when they were trying to do that, he immediately states that he'll pa pa pass through it without the Republicans' invoice. And I'm like – Yeah, and of course Obama, the Republicans are like, the, Yeah, I'm like – yeah, I was, well, I'll say – I'm like, 
Obama, you could be the you're the very very badass right now. You're better than well, what God is all. I'm looking at you, George W. Bush. <sighs> w. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Even as a kid, I knew he was doing stupid things. <laughs> yeah, I, I admit I wasn't paying too close attention. I, I was a bad voter when when the 2000 elections came around. It was also I had just turned 18. So, oh. So again, 18, lived in rural taint of Florida, didn't know uh. much better. Ugh, yeah. But by 2004, I learned my lesson. I didn't vote for either of those schmucks <laughs> because I was just like, you guys are like fucking babies. I don't want you representing me. Actually, I'd rather prefer Al Gore. Yeah. Well, okay, no, I, well I, I'm talking uh, 2004. It was uh, oh, Kerry then. Oh, yeah. And looking uh, back now, Gore probably would have been a better choice. Yeah. yeah. And, and. Yeah. Yeah. Quoting the third rock. Quiet. I hear a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's like, I mean, with even without that, a lot of people have learned that Al Gore's super bad, 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 and that well, super badass is, mo and also mostly his appearances, like in Thirty Rock, and also Future Armor, where he they literally made him super awesome yes. in the future. <laughs> I have ridden the mighty moonworm. Good for him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh. But yeah, the things that the Republicans keep pulling and, and trying to push throughout this entire goddamn year, which I, I, I envy Omega. She was able to get out. Uh, Hi, so, Omega, if you're watching this. Yes. Uh, yes. And yeah, she's uh, with her lovely wife now. And yes, and, they, and of course... They yeah, she's on, happy. So. You know, she's happy over there in Northern Ireland. Yes. You know. Oh, yes, so yes, yes, yes. better yes, be yes. happy. So, so among the things that that the Republicans have been pushing and, and pulling this year, and not just the Republicans, and by the Republicans I mean the the politic the, the actual politicians, uh, you know, and their ilk, you know, they they push things like anti-abortion bills trying to be pushed through, even though abortion is a con. I, I want to say it's a constitutional right, but it is a right nonetheless. You know, whether it's con you know, whether it's be guaranteed by the constitution or not, it's a fucking right because a woman's right to choose what happens to her own goddamn body. Mm. And then if, and then you got oh goddamn. You got the one still oh god, there was it was oh what oh one guy, Colorado, um um Klingenschmidt, who just recently, you know, talking about health care you know, he, he stated something along the lines of uh, yeah, don't go to your government for your health care, go to Jesus. You know, uh, because God is going to take care of your health care. Right. Uh, okay. okay. Here's um, where I come in. Okay. I'm a Catholic. Yeah. You guys know that. Yes. I God's, am too. Like, God's, got, God's gave us free will, you know. He's going to be like, whoa, 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 guys. Do your own thing, okay? When you come to the pearly gates, you know, then we'll talk. But you know what? Y'all got free will. I gave you free will. Get some fucking health care. I'm going to go sit on the toilet for an hour. <laughs> Well, Pretty much, okay. yeah. You, I'm, even though I was like baptized Catholic, I believe what every that people have their own beliefs. But if you got people that well go super nuts about it, like uh, the guy that Gomer just mentioned, then you are pretty much making Christians, Catholics, or Jew Jews, whatever he has for right. himself, a bad name. Yeah. And of course, there's always the blatant anti-Christian, not anti-Christian, but, um, but but the the non-Christian um, bias, that, that, that right. uh, or anti-bias rather, for for lack of a better term. Basically, what these GOPers want is to turn this more into a theocracy instead of a democracy, like it's supposed to be, or or democratic republic actually is what we're supposed to be. But they want it to be a theocracy. They want they use the Bible to to justify what laws they want to put in place. They want to be able to go to your public schools and say, "Hey, you know what? Have a Bible. Every kid gets a free Bible." But if somebody, if a Muslim wants to go in there, no, they can't do that because that is of the devil. Oh, oh yeah. There's like a there was like um when I was going my to my tech college. It was always once every year this guy would randomly stand in front of the digital building and hand out little mini green Bibles. And I'm just – I remember 
he I had he had given me one and I didn't know what it was a Bible until I got sat in my digital class. I'm just looking at it and I'm like, why did he give me a Bible? Yeah, see, if you're in a private yeah. school, it, it's something that that I've men probably mentioned on previous shows, but I am going to definitely clarify it here. If you want to have, if you have a private school, and you want it to be religious, fine. Private school, privately funded. That means it's coming out of the pocket of some one percenter in the area, and it's a private thing, and that's all on them. That's fine. The problem comes when you have taxpayers who may or may not believe the exact same way that are having to foot the bill. They shouldn't have to. Constitutionally, they should not have mm. to foot the bill. That is, you know, it's it's like people who who argue still argue about whether or not you should have the nativity outside of like city halls or whatever. You know, it's like, yeah, you know what? The nativity in and of itself is fine in a private setting. That is something like that is showing that the government is showing favoritism towards one religion over others, and that's unconstitutional. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't give a shit. I don't give a shit about the nativity. But legally speaking, constitutionally speaking, it's wrong to have it there right. at City Hall. You can have it on your actually, own property. That's fine. Actually, um, the, okay, what you just said is actually remind me of something that uh, uh, any Christian reviews just did for their Christmas special is a movie called a. Uh, C for Christmas, which is almost kind of like the same thing where you had a, a guy who hasn't been to his hometown in Alaska, who's now a lawyer, uh, comes back and he starts to stand in, and he's an atheist who pretty much gets very uncomfortable of that there's a nativity scene in the city hall and sues the whole town to take, take it away and tries running for mayor. And everyone tries to, well, try their best with it. I don't know what really happens. I, I recommend watching the, uh, his review of it because it's very short. A very short review, but it's actually very interesting to have a... No, there's a movie like that. That yeah. just... That, exactly what Comer said. Just like that. And I'm just like... Huh. I'm, I'm willing to bet. I, I, I've not watched the review myself. But I'm willing to bet in that in the context of that film, the the... the, the producers or the writers are playing up that guy. I mean, sure, there are non-religious people, be they atheists or what have you, that would go that far. I haven't seen many this year. Thankfully. I think there was one like, you know, maybe the last decade where somebody went and tried to sue a school or a town or something because of the pledge or whatever. And that's another thing. You know, the Pledge of Allegiance, originally it, was un it didn't have under God and then the Red Scare happened, and they decided to put under God because they thought having under God in their pledge made their dicks look bigger or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. There's like a, some kids who won't stand up for pledge, and teachers finally uh, hurting the kids that not that they should stand for a pledge when there's actually a law, actually for school systems that it's the students' right whether or not they can actually stand for the pledge or not. Yeah. It's actually, their right. It actually reminds me of a political comic that's been going around for years. It was like, there is a kid who doesn't want to stand for the pledge, and the teacher's like, well, that's your right to not stand. But uh, let me meet, let me show you a guy who can't stand for the pledge, who, who who lost his legs for you to have that right. It's like kind of guilt-tripping him into it. And it's like, you, oh, you fucking... Uh, guilt, the guilt-trippers. Oh, I, I, I just hate them. Uh, but so many other things. I'm actually looking at some of the notes that I've had because there were a lot of links I've tried to set aside for constructive deconstruction because they go – we go a little bit more in depth than we do on a regular episode of Thespian Talk about a lot of things. And I'm just looking at some of these like uh, there's a Georgia city – again, some of these are older, so that may have changed by now. But there was a Georgia city that banned abortion clinics to avoid protesters and drama because, uh. because yeah, that's legal. No. You, no. you have to get in there. You have to get in there and deal with that shit. You know, you can't, you know, it's it's kind of like parenting. You have a kid, you have to keep dealing with that kid. You know? Or if you have a, a pet, you still have to take care of your pet. Yeah, and fuckers who right. buy pets as puppies and give them away as adults need to be shot. I'm going to say it like that. I'm not saying where to, they should be shot. They should just be shot. Okay, shoot them yeah, there's like No, I remember there's like some type of a... Uh... Post on Tumblr that went on where some people don't understand how do it could be just to hurt a dog. When, like when you get them as a puppy, they're so cute, and when 
I just, when they grow up to be adults, which they're still cute, and the guy and they come back between the dog saying that if they don't think the dog's they're keen or they want they want to bring it back, it hurts the dog physically and meant physically in their head because they feel believe they did something wrong and they will never recover from that. Uh, it's it's just I'm not even a dog person, and and that breaks my heart, you know. Because, yeah. maybe because I'm actually a decent human. Oh. Uh, and and we've had oh oh god, so there was uh, ma, 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 ma. there was something actually that oh. I had I had seen in the general links for the constructive deconstruction files. Uh, let's oh, see, god. we've had we've had GamerGate happen this year. We did. The, oh, in god. fact, interestingly enough, we've not been able to do a constructive deconstruction since our GamerGate episode, and more has happened since then. Um, I do want to go on record again and say, okay, I don't care what side you're on. Doxing, you're a jackass, you're an asshole, yep. and you slapped in the face with a large fish. Okay. My, main, my main thing with Gamergate is that how it started. Okay, it started with a guy pissed off at a, at a lady, and it just snowballs from there. Yeah, that's how it all like, started. How sad do you have to be to just... It's horrible, it's just that one little thing. Just one guy breaks up with a girl. You know, it's just like, what? Yeah. That's he, how it all gets... started? Yeah, and he starts spreading rumors that she slept with reviewers or what have you, you know, because he because he was upset she wasn't getting his dick wet anymore. Hmm. And yes, I'm putting that as vulgarly as possible because I've been listening and watching, listening to and watching a lot of George Carlin recently. <laughs> Ew. Hey, that's, there's nothing wrong with watching George Carlin. Okay. Yes. So, so yeah, so that's how it started, and there are people out there that legitimately want to talk about issues that are that were at least initially brought up to cover the fact that you know people were trying to harass you know females in the gaming industry that's what that's what's been going on there are people that want to bring up legitimate points and i say to those people you know bring them up bring them up for debate fine just don't use the gamergate tag because because people look at that and to be fair it also works the other way around at least for me i see gamergate i see anti-gamergate i look at both of you guys sideways just you know eh, because of what each side is represented both sides have represented harassment both sides have represented doxing and both sides need to go back to their corners and eat their ice cream or how about or... go back to their corners for time out that works too just go to the corner Yes, both sides go, go to the, the corner, corner and think about what you've done. Now, if you want to actually I... have a debate about ethics in gaming journalism or game design or what have you, then step up and say, yes, I am representing myself. I am not a part of any movement. Let's talk. You know, get just get rid of those labels. If you if you as a person, you know, and, and bear in mind, this is this is also kind of a a a, a um, uh, a, a more of a suggestion on my part, you know, you know, get rid of the labels, because eh. there are people that are on the Gamergate side that are decent people, you know, they're, you know, people that I respect and I enjoy listening to or watching that that side with the Gamergate side, and they're they they do not come across as the people who would condone the harassment that goes on, and there yeah. are people on the anti-Gamergate side with the same thing they don't condone they're like they're like guys stop it you're not helping it's like it's like oh another thing that's happened this year we've had ferguson you know because uh, yeah. darren wilson ferguson. decided uh, that that this this black kid needed to die for jaywalking uh, at least at least according to the information we've got according to the information we've got and everything yeah. we've got around there that's how it I, looks again this is okay. one of those ferguson as as uh, Kat and I had discussed when we talked about it on the show, um, you know, we, there are still other facts that we don't necessarily know for sure. And yeah, bear I, in I, mind, my outburst is based on what I do know and what I see. Yeah. Now, however, yeah. there was also another one that had happened. I think it was Eric Garner, who very plainly was choked on camera and died because of it. And it's and I've looked, I've learned, looked around. It's illegal for a cop to choke. A guy, choke a citizen when they have a citizen when they're cuffed, and the guys, both those cuffs never got suspended, never got fired, they, they never got, got charged. Got goddamn free. Even though that he, even the law states it's illegal to do that, and I, I know. Okay, I can say right now for myself right here, I 
don't like any of the political stuff. This is why I've never, I don't want to be talk about the Gamergate stuff. I don't like talking about Ferguson. I don't like talking about the Eric Garner can't breathe. I don't like talking about this because I get into fear. I know it's getting in arguments. You get to agree, disagree, but it makes me feel so uncomfortable that this is happening in the real world. And it makes me hurt that how far have we fucking gone where we've just gone backwards from racism that was resolved that even though it was resolved in the 70s 60s it's still going on it's now gone fucking reverse that i don't know if we can reverse it again and then going on to that of gamergate where we have men bashing a woman just because they love video games where women actually can show great intelligence and what they can do and just they're not well, women can show very great knowledge of video game stuff and girls can love video games girls can love guy stuff why can't we be accepted for that when guys are accepted loving girl stuff and it pisses me the fuck off exactly let it out <sighs> shit this is this is one of the good things about this show just let it out <laughs> and i yeah i don't do that a lot uh, we we all probably should do a little bit more Casey, um, how you, tell us how you really feel i know right but no, uh, seriously, seriously, she is. You are one hundred percent right. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> on on you're, all wonder, of it is just. Well, I guess. Well, look. I know we haven't gotten to how we feel at the end of twenty fourteen, but here's how I feel about it. It was go- halfway good in the beginning. The last month or two has been crappy and i've been trying my best just to ignore it just trying my best not to be involved in the fucking drama trying my best to actually focus on more stuff just to get my mind of things and yet i get i i'm get i get pulled i don't want to get pulled on stuff because i just i feel like I, if i do i'm going to speak my mind speak my truth i'm going to get called out for it even though that's what the, happens that's what's happening and especially right now where i want to say the truth about something but i if i do i'm afraid i'm gonna do something that might lo- make someone lose their life and i don't want to be a part of that and that's always a risk when something this big happens i mean okay here here is something for the you are not helping file from what has happened because just recently like in the past couple of days uh some guy got two cops to, you know just shot and killed two cops like like yeah. i think like execution you know ex- i want to say execution style but i'm not sure and i want to look at that guy i, I think he killed himself too though i want to I, if he was still alive i would want to look at that guy and say you know what you're not fucking helping and already you know, everybody that's on the side of the cops are saying, yeah, the protesters need to be shut down because of this. This was caused by the protesters from Ferguson and Eric Garner and everything. This is all their fault. Well, no, it's the fault of one fucking wacko rando. Just like, you know, you know, the hashtag not all cops. You know, it's not the it's not the entirety of every police force ever's fault that Eric Garner and, and, and Michael Brown and other unarmed black victims, because in this case they are more than likely victims, are killed. It's not the entirety of every police force ever. And that's something people need to remember and understand. Nobody is saying all cops do this. Nobody is saying, nobody should be saying, all protesters do this, or all black people, or all white people, or all men, or all women. Obviously, it should be obvious. It should not have to be stated. And interestingly enough, like the not all women thing, when when Gamergate came around, I looked at it. I looked at that hashtag, and I'm like, no fucking shit, not all men. Duh. And that that always brings that to mind. But so many people nowadays take a generalizing thing to mean everybody. It doesn't mean everybody. It's general. That general is, is, is just a handful. It's just you pick a handful, and generally this is what you're going to get out of a general pick of the population. That's it. That really is it. It's not all one group. It's you know, enough people for it noticed. Obviously, not all cops kill unarmed black people. Obviously, not all. Not all protesters are violent. The ones that have been violent are, are either just super extremely pissed and can't control themselves, or they're fucking trolls. You know? That's the thing. And see, and, and this is this is something everybody, you know, you, you, you're talking about speaking your mind and getting stuff out there. 
that's why I want to encourage everybody, you know, if you if if you need an outlet or something, just put it out there. Hell, if you have to make a fake account on Tumblr and put it out there, will you be called out on shit? Sure. Everybody will. And that that's to be expected. You know, I I'm actually kind of disappointed I'm not called out more. <laughs> it makes me wonder, am I just that right or are people just not listening? <laughs> Huh. But, eh, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Let's uh, let's get down to the good stuff before yes. we run out of time here. Yeah, we yeah. got about about ten more minutes left. Oh dear. Yeah. So let's, okay, let's good stuff. Uh, yeah, we did. We uh, actually did make it to it. <laughs> yeah, almost. But yeah. I do. Okay, to end it, I I do want to talk a little bit about. We started talking, you know, with movies. I do want to talk TV a little. But we'll end on the on the television. Those are going to be. Higher notes, because I think all three of us, I, I think all three of us are Doctor Who fans. Yes, we are. I I gotta really oh. rewatch it mostly because um I the last episode I watched was just as the, after the tenth Doctor uh Doctor Doctor Jenner and the tenth Doctor, so I have not really got caught up with anything. I know what's happened, but I don't know what's going on. Uh, I, I know. Think, okay, so uh. so kind of spoiler free because you know. Uh, this this actually goes up. Uh, it's going to go up uh, three days before the Christmas special, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> so am I. That's oh, going to be awesome. Oh, uh, series eight of Doctor Who, fucking awesome. Um, yeah. They, they, obviously, there are some low points. Some episodes didn't work quite as well. But Peter Capaldi, holy shit. Um, yeah, I he like. Is, he is I, working. I, he is I, rocking I, it. Yes, I agree. I like I like series eight as a whole. You know, some people say that Clara was, like, too whiny and stuff. You know, like, well, Clara's just trying to adjust, you know? It's yeah. an, still an adjustment period for her, and the Doctor's not really making it easy, per se. The Doctor's still kind of a cranky person. <laughs> well, I, yeah. well, the best way I can say it, you know? Yeah. Although, the, the end of the series, holy shit! I yes, was not that expecting was amazing. it. I was um, not expecting it either. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I was like telling people spoiled. on Twitter, telling yeah. everybody on Twitter who lives in the UK, do not spoil Doctor Who, or I will come over there and I will end you. Yeah. Well, oh, actually, people are very good. Somehow, like the UK is better not to hold any spoilers. Like uh, over here, like, like didn't they have like a uh, how the creator Doctor Who said like uh, if you don't, sp all right, uh, UK if. If no one gives spoilers or releases uh, spo spoilers, that will release a teaser for the Twelfth Doctor. Something like that. I think that was around like the fiftieth yeah. anniversary and such. Because yeah. and the they, uh, yeah, box. No. Oh no no! It was Series Seven Part Two. A box set was released early. Yeah. On accident, sent out early, and Moffat's like, "Oh shit." <laughs> And so, and, so they and, did that, and, and there you go. And actually, it was and, it was yeah, like a special with uh, David Tennant and Matt Smith, I think is what it was. Yeah, and everyone, was yeah, yeah, everybody was like, okay, we don't want anybody's... Okay, uh, yeah, we won't do that, so we'll keep spoilers. And I'm just like, that's how you handle a fandom well with spoilers. Yes. So. And and I have, to f I have to wonder, speaking of spoilers, god damn it, soap opera fandom. They spoil <laughs> things left and right. I I do my best to avoid them, and I know there are sometimes you have bigger name stars that are going to be popping on the show every now and then. I mean, they probably I wasn't watching uh, General Hospital, which is what I focus on with the Poor Charlie podcast. I wasn't watching it at the time that James Franco was on the show, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that he he was built up quite a bit. And there are other there are other actors may not be known as much in the mainstream, but are, are real, really well known in the soap opera world. Um, and some of them are even starting to hit a little bit more mainstream. Like uh, Michelle Stafford, actually has her own web series called uh, The Stafford Project. You can watch it on YouTube. I think her DVDs, uh, the DVD of her first season, is on sale as well. If you want to go pick that up and have the DVD, but. Um, but she's been doing well, and she was touted big name coming on General Hospital because she is uh, well known for, uh, I think the role, I want to say her role was Phyllis on uh, Young and the Restless. Mm -hmm. And she had played that for years, and now she's coming over playing uh, crazy lady Nina Clay. <laughs> and yes, certifiably crazy. crazy. Certifiably crazy, too. Not like, not like just, you know, your stereotypical crazy. I mean, like, seriously, woman has mental issues. 
and it is and they're trying to address it in show mental issues like yeah you need help this is also the same show that has your out there sci-fi plots i.e. weather machine trying to freeze the world Ah. Mm. Well, there's my a, uh, grandmother and I used to watch all my children. That has some weird sci-fi plots going on. Yeah. Uh, what? Oh, uh, yeah. That there used to be like a drama show, like an early two thousand called Passion, that somehow delved into weird s fantasy s stuff. It was so strange, and then it got canceled. Like I think a few years ago. Yeah, I think one of the characters on that one was like a voodoo doll played by a midget. Oh yeah, uh, he passed away uh, during a. Uh, uh, they actually got the character killed off because he, the character, I think, he almost Hello. had a disease or something. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, but um, he was like the—he actually played a. If you saw like the live action, how the Grinch stole Christmas, he was the little baby kid Grinch. Oh. That was him. Wow. Yeah, yeah. and I think for uh, for um TV shows like. I know people are telling me to get into Agent of Shield. I need to. I ha I got the first season of my Netflix queue. I know people are telling me watch Arrow. I'm like, I got that on my Netflix queue. Watch Flash. I'm like, that's not on Netflix yet. Which interestingly enough, I think it's uh, the Flash is going to be having a, a an, an actor who's been on General Hospital, uh, Roger Howarth. Keep an I eye. I never heard of him. Keep an eye on that name. He'll be appearing in the Flash. Uh, he's been playing uh, Franco on General Hospital, who is. Who has been everything from a sociopathic serial killer to a, a, a more sympathetic guy, now back to sort of sociopath. Although they, they, they toss around sociopath. He's not really a sociopath. Because by definition, a sociopath is somebody who just doesn't feel anything. And yeah. he does clearly feel things. He feels pain. He feels grief. He feels anger. He, feel, you know, he does feel things. And he's a bit of a troll. <laughs> but, you know. Troll. And uh, yeah, there's like also um I'm trying to think what else for TV shows. And, uh, oh, somebody brought up uh, I think it was Jess, uh, either you or Jess who brought up uh, Nymphomaniac earlier. Uh, oh, oh, that, that was Jess. It was How, Jess. Why would I bring up Nymphomaniac? I don't know. I wouldn't bring it up either. I don't think I want to watch anything called Nymphomaniac. I might, but then again, there's an actor who who has been on General Hospital. In fact, recently, uh, older guy. Uh, the actor's name is Anders Hove. He plays the supervillain Cesar Faison, and he is also in Nymphomaniac, <laughs> which is what I found out. I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> uh, wow. Yeah, uh, the, the three of us, uh, Namio, Julia, and me, I, we joked like, we do not want to see Faison's O face. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think there's also, um, I'm trying to think for shows. Uh... There's a. I've been actually one of the shows I've been getting into for this year is actually I've been got hooked into Master Chef, Master Chef Junior because of Master Chef Junior. I started watching Hell's Kitchen, and oh, yeah. I Thank and then you, um, Rosen. I, I, I actually Hell's, I got into Hell's Kitchen mostly because I wanted to watch it because of Kitchen Nightmares, and then I got into Master Chef, Master Chef because I got. I started watching Master Chef Junior, and I'm like, I want to watch Master Chef. Oh, look, the season's coming out. I'm gonna watch it. I'm like, why well, can't I be a part of this shit? I gotta be a better cook. Yeah. And there's also, um, I've been watching a lot of cooking stuff. I don't know why. It's just, it's fun. Yeah. And well, there's no, also, see, I, 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 I kind of blame Rosen for the uh, Kitchen Nightmare stuff because, well, that's what we would watch a lot of times on. Well, there's, on well, call. there's no more kitchen. Well, there, yeah, I used to. There's no more Kitchen Nightmares because, like, Gordon did like a, uh. The last one was like a re episode was revisited, and that was the actual last episode of Kitchen Nightmares. Goran didn't want to do any more of that because he wants to focus on a lot of other stuff. So, which is understandable. Although I did get the uh, two Amy's Baking Company episodes off of iTunes <laughs> because that oh, was that, just insane. That, that restaurant is like gotta be the most insane place ever. Yeah, how the uh, hell is it still open? I because of how popular that episode was, just for the crazy shit. Yeah, apparently, apparently, just and, wow. What? Yeah, there's also yeah, there's also um. I think also one of the shows that people should really look off is Sci-Fi's Face Off T series special effects makeup show. It's fucking amazing. Then the, the, the next, I think the eighth season is gonna be coming back on in like the end of January of 2015. Go watch it. It's fucking amazing. You get to see a lot of awesome shit. Yay. Oh, and speaking of awesome, I I've still got to watch all of them, but I'm understanding that South Park had a good season too. 
<laughs> like I watched, I watched the season finale with 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 everything coming together with like oh, the Christmas special and PewDiePie and all of them, and, and it's like it's basically I'm terming it a PewDiePie saves the internet because that seems like what he did. It's like wow, what the hell? <laughs> Uh, it, it's honestly, it's more. It's got to be seen to be believed. Um, and I've got to go back and watch all the other episodes. I really need to catch up on South Park because I love that show. Uh. Oh dear! And I've heard there was like uh, crossovers with Simpsons and Family Guy. I don't know. I think it was this year or was it last year? I, no, this year. It I, was people, this year. I heard people did not like the family. Uh, the fan, the crossover with the Simpsons Family Guy. I haven't heard if people love the crossover with Simpsons and Futurama. I've only saw probably maybe a clip of it where it's like you, uh, you got Leela meeting Marge and Marge is in her head. She's like, don't mention the eye, don't mention the eye, don't mention the eye. And Leela's, and Leela's uh, like, don't mention the hair, blue hair, don't mention the hair, don't mention the hair. I'm like, <laughs> this is something these two would actually do. Yeah. See that that's a good crossover right there. No, apparently I have I haven't watched it, but apparently it was something where Bender goes back in time to kill Bart for something that happens in the future. And I'm like, how's that wow. possible when it's two different universes? I don't know. I haven't watched it, but I'm just like, I don't care if it's like it's supposed to be in the same universe. It still sounds like pretty. It's a fucking awesome thing. Yeah. Just to oh. get the two shows. Oh, and and okay, we'll we'll end we'll end the show on. I, I was I was saying we were gonna do TV, but I just remember like internet shows. Shit, some huh. of them that got you know more bigger and, and kind of came on our radar a little bit more. Uh, again, like I said, the Stafford Project is out there. Uh, it's on YouTube. Just look it up. You can check it out. Home Star Runner is back. Home Star so, Runner is back. I, uh, I've also heard. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, Homestuck is also back as well. Hmm. Which I never really got into it. I know other people do, and somebody's going to be like, "Oh my god, I mentioned Homestuck." <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's also yeah, uh... yeah. There's yeah, also everybody I likes just... the Homestar Runner. Everybody yeah. likes the Homestar. Yeah. yeah, I can I can mention a ser internet series a series I just actually watched mostly because I got in, I watched the cosplay music videos. Uh, Mario Warfare. It's actually very very good. It's a very it's like take all super. All the Tendo and just make it as though there's a war machine going warfare going with get, with the bot on. It's it's actually amazing. It's by a company a YouTube uh production company known as Beat Down Boogie. So yeah. you could you could watch the, the whole Mario Warfare right now in eight parts. There you go. Oh, uh, so other other ones that I've noticed and and some of them are starting to come up a little bit more. Markiplier, obviously. Markiplier. Yes, because Markiplier is pure awesome. And that and, voice. And he's adorable. Yes. We need to put Markiplier and Brad Jones in a room together. <laughs> yes. Somebody on the channel asked yeah. yeah. Somebody, somebody on the does. channel asked on Facebook group this afternoon this morning said that we should put uh Brad Jones and uh uh Film Brain, my other boss, uh together in a room that can be Pinky in the Brain. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, yes. Oh, dear. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, Yes. Oh, so okay. Um, there's also a Let's Play group, uh, a group of DJs actually that do Let's Plays. They're known as the D-Pad. Uh, they, you know, they're they're doing well for themselves. They've got really great quality uh, in terms of uh, production quality for their Let's Plays, and all they're doing, all they're doing is just kind of, you know, bouncing their way through. Like right now, they're doing Legend of Zelda series, but starting next month, they're going to be doing all the Mega Man games. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be great. And they do a lot of Pokemon stuff, too. So if you're a Pokemon fan, go check them out as well. Um, but there you go. They're just at the D-pad. I think their Twitter is downright pad. And go check them out. Wait. And and by the way, speaking of the D-pad and, and, and all of that, um, site auditions are still going as of this mm. production, as of this show. Um, I will be I will be trying to keep that circulating probably every six hours. I'll try and schedule it on Tumblr, which will hit everywhere else every six hours. Um, yeah. If if you go and talk to the D pad and you want to send, I had thought about just outright asking them, but it's like nah, I kind of want to I, I, I kind of want to see if they have interest. So 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 you might want to point them in. Yeah. Oh yeah. I actually I think I might pop up. Uh brought pointed Dr. Holocaust in your direction too because yeah, I'm like you did I, yeah. I've, I've seen that <laughs> I'm like 
That would be awesome. Well, it would be awesome. I really hope he does send a message since, like, I'm worried what's going to happen with him with Doug Walker. Because I'm just like, because I, Dr. Holocaust does good videos. Like, it's just mostly informational stuff, but it's still very entertaining to watch, especially he's all based in Canada. Fuck again. Just. We can use Canadians. <laughs> Uh, and we can use more. We've got we've got some in. We've I've got a good little chunk in. I'll have to lose sleep over a few of them. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, so, but you know, we can always use more. Again, it's only going to be like five or six that I'm going to end up picking up in the end. But don't let that don't let that discourage you. Send your stuff in. Come on. Uh, you got till January 11th, 2015. That's when the cutoff date is. I do keep checking on the WordPress because sometimes they think some of them is spam and they don't send it to my email. That happened last time. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know how I managed to get in. Oh, yeah, bribery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah. But at any rate, at this point, we, we are going to have to go ahead and bounce out of here for now. Um, you know, again, yeah, if you're watching, this, you're watching the video here, I've got it set up a little differently because it is a stream. Obviously, we got the stuff at the bottom. Uh, if you're yeah. watching this later on YouTube or whatever and you prefer it this way, then let me know and I will set it up to where future shows are done very similarly as well. Uh, so... Yep. Oh, that'll be that'll be a good little bit of feedback I would like from you guys, if possible. Um, also, so uh, we get out of here. Um, uh, see, Farah, uh, where can we find you? Well, you can find me at starvaults.blogspot.com, YouTube slash seafarer1227. You can find me sitting in my computer, basing front. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, you can find me that's in the uh, Now Channel Awesome blogs. I was going to say Tig with Tig blogs, but um, that ship has sailed. Yeah. <laughs> the Now Channel. The, the app we generated into Channel Awesome now, so found yes. called the CA blogs. You can find me at Twitter at 1227, CFR 1227. I already said that. I have a Facebook group. Just look up Starball Productions. And that's pretty much it. Jet, your turn. Right. Where can we find you, Casey? Okay, uh, you can find follow me on Twitter at Miss Nightmare uh, twenty four, and that's with an N, not with the K at it. I'm looking at you, Steve the Wicked. Oops. Uh, uh, it's okay, Ouch. but I I said to him, Miss Nightmare would actually sound like a nice alternate u universe version for if I was English. Yeah. And um, you can also find me on uh, patreon.com slash nightmare productions. I have a Patreon. If you love my stuff and want to just be support the show, you can't. But if you don't have have money you can still support it you can also find my art on uh, tnbc cb artist 24 7 at deviantart and i do have a uh, a new site for my videos on vimeo but fortunately it does not have a name so you can actually find my new videos on vimeo on the rt gomer prod site yes and the oh yeah sure. yeah you can oh yeah stuff. Stuff. <laughs> yeah oh yeah i forgot to mention yeah you can also find my site about on, uh, you can find my stuff on some site called RT Gomer. Yeah, yes. no big deal. It's RT Gomer Productions, where you can find such videos, videos from, you know, Lady Jess who was here earlier, Miss Nightmare, C. Farah, Diamanda Hagen, Spaz Fox, and of course myself. I am Gomer the Ranting Thespian. If you want to find me on the social media, you can find me on the Twitters and the Tumblers at gomer 21 X. We also have a Facebook page which I need to actually push more. Just look up RT Gomer Productions and there you go. I can also be found on nerdvice.com pushing my stuff there as well. In fact, both the last podcast roundup and my latest review are live over there as I speak. If you want to go and watch them and you missed the pre-show, then you can go and you can check those out. Because, you know, I, 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 I'm, I admit I am a little, I feel a little shaky about the review, but uh, the more I think about it, the more it's like, you know what, I can be satisfied. And just oh, take whatever fine. I learned, take whatever I learned, and put it in the next one. That's all I can really do. And uh, as far as my Patreon stuff, that's going to be in the bumper that comes up when I edit this all together. So I don't have to do it all here. And that includes Becky's information because she is the one who does the lovely artwork. And she mm -hmm. is awesome. And, 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 and everything you should go and commission her. In fact, uh, Gonzo Link just recently commissioned her for an animation. 
uh, the show he does with us. So go and check all that out, and you can see. So um, anyways, that should be it. We will get out of here, and there will not be a show next week, so we will be back the first of the next year. And hopefully things will be better, and we'll be able to get things changing and moving and shaking. It'll be great. Yes, 2015. It's going to be great. And hopefully we will get those hover cars and hoverboards we all promised. Yes, I want a hoverboard, damn it. <laughs> or at least a hover scooter. That would be great. Right. Hover scooter just go, walk, just go right around town on a hover scooter. That'd be awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yes. So, anyways, you know, 2014, go away, fuck you, jack me off, all that good stuff. I am not George Carlin, I cannot do it that fast. Um, <laughs> really? Uh, yes. Well, that was part of that was part of his routine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. <laughs> yes. But, uh, uh, so, 14, 2014, go and fuck all of the... 15, you have... Yeah, you actually don't have a high bar to jump over compared to... Let's hope you get really high over that bar. Uh, so thank you guys for listening, and we will see you next year. <laughs> yes, yes we will. Take care, everyone. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to patreon.com slash gomer21xx. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who could be commissioned by going to patreon.com slash beckyhop. Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows. Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome Good to Good morning, Talk. Vietnam. <laughs> oh, God damn Sorry. it. <laughs> yes, I broke Gomer. <laughs>